your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be starting in approximately five minutes. Therefore, uh, we should begin in approximately 420. So at 420, we'll begin this afternoon's press conference.
Ya gitu. A very pleasant good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for attending the official kickoff press conference for the 89th Capital One Orange Bowl. We've got a thrilling matchup set for December 30th at Hard Rock Stadium, which will be televised by ESPN at 8 p.m. We are pleased to welcome today the University of Tennessee from the Southeastern Conference and Clemson University from the Atlantic Coast Conference. We'd like to thank our partners, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel Hollywood for their hospitality and hosting this afternoon, as well as this evening's event later tonight. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Frank Gonzalez, President and Chair of the Orange Bowl Committee for some opening remarks. Mr. Gonzalez. Thank you, Don. Uh, big congratulations to Coach Heupel, Coach Sweeney, on an excellent season, uh, excellent team, excellent work. Welcome to the 89th Capital One Orange Bowl. We're so glad to have you. Um, we know that Clemson and, and Tennessee have had a, a rich history and have played each other about 19 times, I think, uh, since back in 1901. But this is the first time that you're going to face off in the Orange Bowl, so we're very, very excited about that. Um, I just want to let you guys know, like, you know, just like the rich history that your schools have and your traditions, Orange Bowl also has a very rich history going back to 1935, 87 years, where our main mission has been to generate tourism in the South Florida area. And it's something that we've been able to develop for, for many, many years. And also at the same time to contribute back to the community, uh, giving back millions of dollars and opportunities to, uh, to the people of our community in South Florida. And we've had the opportunity, we have four pillars that we concentrate on, which is youth sports, um, overall in the community engagement, education and legacy programs that we help parks across the area. We've been able to generate and put back in the community over $40 million in the last 10 year, 20 years, actually, the last 20 years. So we look forward to keeping that tradition going with our partners um, and as part of the game, which is one of the things that actually helps us to do that. So again, welcome, congratulations. I want to thank Seminole Hard Rock Hotel uh, for this beautiful venue here in Hollywood and for giving us the opportunity to be here and for being one of our longstanding partners. And we look forward to the 89th Capital One Orange Bowl game. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gonzalez. Now, I'd like to welcome Mr. Eric Palms, Chief Executive Officer of the Orange Bowl Committee, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Don. And uh, first of all, we couldn't be more excited to have number six, Tennessee, and number seven, Clemson, in the 89th Capital One Orange Bowl. Uh, this is the highest ranked non-playoff Capital One Orange Bowl matchup that we've had in the CFP era. In fact, aside, aside from the uh, national championship game and the semifinal games, this is the highest ranked Capital One Orange Bowl since we had number five, USC, led by head coach Pete Carroll, and they defeated number three, Iowa, in the 2003 Orange Bowl with the help of the game's MVP, Heisman Trophy winner, Carson Palmer. Uh, the Capital and Orange Bowl shares a long-standing partnership with the ACC that dates back to the Bowl Alliance and the Bowl Championship Series. And we're delighted to have this year's ACC champion, the Clemson Tigers, had a fantastic 11-2 season and a remarkable run under the leadership of one of the game's great head football coaches, better person, uh, head coach Dabo Swinney, good friend. And this is the uh, Tigers' seventh appearance in the Capital One Orange Bowl, the fourth time coach in your uh, tenure. That's remarkable. Uh, the Capital One Orange Bowl also shares a very special relationship with the SEC. And with Tennessee playing in this year's game, it will be the fifth time in a row that we've had an SEC team here in South Florida. So it's a great run there. Uh, the Volunteers will be making their fifth appearance in the Capital and Orange Bowl and the, since, since night, the first since 1998, which was 25 years ago, it seems like yesterday, when legendary coach Peyton Manny led the Volunteers into the National Championship Showdown 
versus Nebraska. However, this is not Coach Heupel's first Orange Bowl experience. In fact, in my office, I told him the other day, there's a panoramic picture of that 2001 Orange Bowl game between Oklahoma and Florida State, where Coach Heupel led uh, the Oklahoma Sooners to an undefeated season and a national championship as the quarterback of the Oklahoma Sooners. So welcome back, Coach. Uh, you can feel the excitement of this game. There have been many comments about that this will be a very orange, orange bowl. <laughs> and we look back to our history and have found a few similar games. Clemson played Miami in the 1951 Orange Bowl. Florida played Syracuse in the 1999 Orange Bowl. And Florida played Virginia in the 2019 Orange Bowl. But with that being said, we do not believe than any match that has what it has here, the indelible, indelible orange colors of Clemson and Tennessee. So we in South Florida are looking forward to painting this community orange as the national spotlight brought, shines bright on the 89th Capital One Orange Bowl. Back to you, Don. Thank you very much, Mr. Palms. Well, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our head coaches for some opening remarks. After each coach gives his opening remarks, then we'll open it up for questions. First, for the sixth rank Tennessee Volunteers of the SEC, Coach Josh Heupel. Thank you to, uh, to everybody here in, in the Orange Bowl committee, uh, to everybody in this community that, that puts this, uh, this football game on. Uh, as a representative of the University of Tennessee, couldn't be more excited about being here in South Florida and the oppor opportunity to, to represent our program and our university. Uh, our staff, our players have had a tremendous year, put in a ton of work uh, to have an opportunity to play in this football game. And I know that uh, everyone's extremely excited. Ball Nation will show up in droves. It uh, will be an exciting opportunity, a, a great football team. Uh, Coach Sweeney and his program have done a great job for a long time. And uh, certainly looking forward to that contest and have a great appreciation for everything that uh, that they've done. Uh, it's been 25 years since uh, Tennessee's been here. Um, it uh, is a unique opportunity. It's a unique um, group of, of young men um, that um, have changed the trajectory of Tennessee football here and, and uh, really proud of, of what they've accomplished this season. Um, having been in the state, lived in the state, uh, been down here in South Florida before uh, to the committee in the Orange Bowl, uh, its mission. Uh, you can see it and you can feel it and the impact that it makes throughout the community down here and, and uh, have great appreciation for what you guys uh, do on a consistent basis. This is my fourth, uh, will be my fourth game. Uh, having been here once as a player that you talked about, that's uh, my favorite Orange Bowl moment in case you were wondering. Um, been here twice as a coach as well. Uh, this game is as big as it gets and as good as it gets. Uh, the community does such a fantastic job of being involved. Uh, it's a great experience for our student athletes, and uh, we are so happy to be here. Thank you very much, Coach Heupel. We'll be back with some questions in a moment. Now for the seventh-ranked Clemson Tigers of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Coach Dabo Sweeney. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, just echo a couple of things Josh said. First of all, just uh, this, this, this is really all you need for explanation on uh, why it's awesome to be able to come down here to Miami and, and be a part of the Orange Bowl. Blue skies, uh, palm trees. Uh, this is a, a beautiful venue and having experienced it a few times, it's just it's incredible. Uh, I'm excited for our staff and our players to be able to have this this experience. Uh, and then what the Orange Bowl committee does throughout this community is unbelievable. Uh, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars that have been generated, you know, through the community, through the platform of football, I think is, is, is what makes football great and it's special. So <clears throat> it's going to be a great trip. Um, and, you know, uh, the game will be an awesome game. I mean, this is, you know, Tennessee, both programs really, I mean, to me, this is a playoff game. Uh, you know, and in a couple of years, it would be a playoff game. Uh, so both of these teams have been in the, you know, in the, in the mix for the playoff all year and both, uh, you know, have had great years. Uh, but what Josh has done at Tennessee is, is incredible. I mean, he's, he, I grew up watching Tennessee. He's made Tennessee, Tennessee again. And, uh, so, you know, it's, it's good and bad, uh, you know, cause you, you know, it, that they're really, really talented. They've got a great scheme. He's got a great staff and uh, got a lot of respect for everything that they do. And, and uh, 
you know, a lot of great memories here at the at the bowl game. My first one was in 99. I remember uh, it was turning Y2K. And uh, my wife uh, was pregnant with my middle son, uh, who's now 23 next next uh, next month. Uh, so it was turning. And remember, the whole world was supposed to, like, end, I think. And, uh, you know, everything was going to, like, shut down. It was like, you know, you better go get some cash and – those of you over 50, you can remember that. And uh, I just remember we were at whatever hotel we were in and we were playing Michigan. And I remember just standing there as the clock was ticking midnight. And, and you know, I'm like, well, babe, this is it. We're gonna, it's about to happen. And it's kind of like, you know, when Chevy Chase went to the to the Grand Canyon, he's like, yeah, Rusty, that's the Grand Canyon. All right, let's go. <laughs> and uh, nothing happened. And I was like, all right, let's go to bed. Uh, so. Uh, but that was an amazing game. That was Tom Brady's last game, and we came out on the short end of that. We missed an extra point in overtime, but he took them down the field with about a minute and a half to tie the game, if, that, if you can believe that or not. Uh, so uh, that's one of my notables of life as I was coaching against Tom Brady in his last college game, and I didn't know, even know who he was, really, uh, other than he was their quarterback. But a lot of great memories, good and bad, you know, on the field, but nobody does it better. Uh, than the Orange Bowl, and we're just thankful to have the opportunity. Our team has worked hard to get here, as has Tennessee, and sure it'll be a great week and a, and a great competition. Thank you very much, Coach Sweeney. At this time, we'd like to open it up for questions. We ask that you please raise your hand. Now, I think a microphone will be brought to you, but if not, you'll just have to speak loudly. And please state your name and your affiliation before asking your question. So we are now open for questions. Here comes the microphone, Mike. Mike DePasquale, the Fox affiliate here in Miami. Both of you said when this was announced that you're gonna be in the Orange Bowl, that this was important to our program. You're not in the playoffs, so why is this game the Orange Bowl important to both of your programs. Either coach can start first. Well, I mean, I think postseason is always important. Um, you know, only four teams get to go to the playoff. Uh, there's there's 131, I think, Division One teams. So, you know, this is an opportunity to compete at the highest level. I mean, this is the Orange Bowl. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this is one of the greatest traditional uh, bowls in all of college football. Um, and so, to have an opportunity to 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 finish your season, to compete at the highest level, um, you know, for your seniors to be able to showcase themselves one more time against uh, a great opponent, for your young players to have an opportunity to experience this stage, um, it's special. So, you know, it's 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 the tradition of college football, you know, to be a part of it, and you know, so it's uh, you get a chance to play one more time, and it's what we do, you know, we 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 like to play, and so we got one more opp opportunity to play. Yes, just simply put, having played and coached in this game, this is a memory, uh, the game itself, and the entire week, the experience that uh, is something that you're going to remember the rest of your life. And, and uh, you know, I had an opportunity to just run into a bunch of my teammates as one was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, you remember these moments, and these experiences create bonds that last forever. And, um, you know, for us – what this program has done, the steps that it's taken in, you know, less than 24 months since I, I took the job, um, you know, what these kids are made of, they get one more opportunity to go do it together uh, against a great opponent. And um, it's a culmination of all the work that's put in. It's a culmination of this season. And it is a great opportunity for your young kids to be exposed to, uh, to one of the biggest and best games in all of college football. David Wilson, Miami Herald. Uh, first, I have one for Josh. Kind of following up on what you were just saying, obviously it's been a while since Tennessee has been in one of these New Year's Six, BCS, whatever yeah. we want to call them. Just whatever how important the, is they're called now? Yeah, whatever they're called, <laughs> or whatever they were called. Uh, just, you know, as a building block, how important is this in terms of maybe exposure? Um, and then also, like you said, for some of the kids who, who might learn from this and just the experience of getting a big game like this, because obviously you're, you're hoping you're going to be in these more often. Yeah, Move absolutely. Uh, believe and know that we will be in, in a bunch of these big games here as our program continues to only grow. Uh, really proud of the, the steps that we've taken in, you know, essentially about, you know, 22 months. Um, 
for for us, this is uh, an opportunity to again be on a national stage, as we are all year long in the conference that we play in. Uh, we've played a lot of really great opponents. We get a chance to play another one here, and and uh, for us, it's an opportunity to take another step as a program. Uh, the practices that you get are important in the development of your roster. Um, we get an opportunity to uh, to finish the season the the right way, and in some ways. Uh, you're kicking off uh, the following season too. And and um, so for us, it's a national stage, has an opportunity to have a huge impact in recruiting. <clears throat> and uh, we get a chance to, to take another step as a program. And then for both of you, I know you both like to recruit around here. Just is there value in, in playing a, a bowl game here in an area that is so important to recruiting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, obviously we have a brand that uh, has an opportunity to attract kids from all over the country. Having an opportunity to, to be in this footprint, the players on our roster that are from here, um, the exposure that we're going to get all week long and then culminate with the game. It absolutely um, is something that uh, can help you in, uh, in future years in your recruiting endeavors. If I can follow up, Dabo, your team comes in scoring just about 35 points a game. Josh, your team leads the nation in scoring. Can we expect a shootout to, to some degree? <laughs> if you play in Tennessee, you better score. Uh, so that's all I know. We don't score. We got no chance because uh, these guys, they not only score a lot of points, they score really fast. Uh, so it's uh, unbelievable, really. And I haven't had a chance to really – dive deeply into them but i've watched them all year long and um i mean it's it's incredible you know they do an amazing job and they've scored on everybody uh everybody so um you i don't think it'll be a 6-3 game uh so you know all i know is 35 is probably not enough for the tigers so we better we better find a way to score some points yeah I Every game takes on its own identity. Uh, Clemson is one of the top defenses in the country. Um, you, you get to uh, to bowl season, the amount of preparation that you have. Every game unfolds a little bit differently, and and uh, this game will take on an identity during the course of play. Uh, you better play smart. You better play physical to win these types of, of big football games. Okay, again, raise your hand, and we'll have a microphone brought to you if you have a question. No more questions? You're letting them off easy. <laughs> they probably enjoy that. Hi, I'm, I'm Corbin, uh, Orange Bull social media guy. Um, on social media, ever since the teams were announced, there's been a lot of talk of what the jersey mashup might be. If there are going to be two orange uh, jersey colors that are going on, what can we expect with jerseys and stuff like that? You want to get together and see how much orange we can get <laughs> on the field at one time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, it's close enough. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're orange pants and maybe white jerseys. I think that's what the guys uh, – I, I think we got to pick, if I remember. Uh, my equipment guy, I asked him, asked the players what they wanted to do. So, I think I think we're white on orange. I think that's what we're wearing. But we got orange helmets and orange tape and orange – shoes and <laughs> we got a lot of it <laughs> you're getting the thumbs up in the back i think you had the right unique combination i don't i don't know what they've picked uh our guys uh pick the uniforms every week so uh i'm sure there'll be a, a ton of orange in it hey josh as a as a former player here and and now as a coach have you reached out to any other coaches <clears throat> to find out how they handle this what five weeks off how much time you give the players off obviously they have finals some are recovering from minor scrapes and, and injuries, but you still need to get them prepared. So have you, have you reached out to other coaches and, and what have you learned so far? Yeah. The, the preparation and, and getting guys ready to, to play their best by the time you get to kick off is uh, the most important thing. Um, we were just talking about it on the way up. The, the calendar is really unique just as far as when signing day is, how late uh, the staffs are on the road. I think it's really hard to balance this year. Um, you, you try to put your kids in the best situation. Uh, guys have been playing a lot of football that are banged up. You want them to have a chance to get healthy. Uh, you want to get some young guy work in too. Uh, you got to continue to develop your roster. You're going to try to balance all of those things. 
uh, here, and, and recruiting is a big part of it up until oh, we actually get to signing day. Uh, having played and coached in a bunch of these games, um, you know, you rely on all of those things that you learn throughout your your career to, to try to put your kids in the best situation. And Dabo, can you pull the curtain back? Was there a time when maybe you gave them too much leniency at a bowl game where they uh, where they went out and you thought maybe I should have uh, not been so lenient? You know, I learned a lot as a player. <clears throat> I was in a lot of bowl games as a player. And um, uh, one of the things that I learned was from Coach Stallings in 1990, we went out to Arizona, the Fiesta Bowl, and played Louisville. And uh, we had no curfew. Uh, he had been in the pros for like 18 years. And uh, I was a sophomore. And we had no curfew. Um, <laughs> and so... Well, I just remember, uh, you know, the night before the game and, and some of the things and I'm like, we we ha we're going to get killed. And they had this quarterback named Browning Nagel. Um, and I think we made him a first rounder that day, but they destroyed us. And uh, but, you know, and it was coach's first bowl game. He had, like I said, hadn't been in college in a long time. And that all changed the next year. Uh, in fact, the next year we were right down here in Fort Lauderdale at the Blockbuster Bowl playing Colorado. And uh it was a whole different deal. And so I, I had the two perspectives as a player. Uh, and then obviously, you know, as a coach, I've been in a lot of them, both at Alabama and, and at Clemson. And, you know, I think you have to have um, – you got to have – you want to you wanna have – let them have some fun and they need to enjoy the experience. I'm, I think that's very important. This is college and, and that's – you want them to ex enjoy this college experience and make great memories and – and all the things that come with it, but you also have to have some structure for them uh, to help them all the way up till game day to get ready. So as Josh was saying, I mean, there's a lot that goes into these few weeks, a lot, uh, you know, from, I mean, they got finals next week. We're, we're trying to practice. Uh, we're trying to recruit. We got signing day. So it's a kind of a weird calendar this year. So you just have to be smart with them. And, and as he said, you want to work on the opponent. You want to work on going back to some basics of some things that you do. Uh, you want to develop your young guys. We'll have some, what we call JV practice and, uh, you know, work some of those younger guys and take advantage of that. So there's a lot that goes into getting ready to play the game uh, all the way up until you kick it off. And I think how you manage that is important. Uh, but, you know, as far as my own personal experience, I think the biggest thing, the biggest regret that I may have just as a head coach was you know maybe trying to do too much um i do think less is more in these type of games and this type of uh deals but so you got a team that's played 13 games um and it always depends too some years your your roster is is younger or older uh so you got to have a feel for that but um you know this is this is a, a, a an opportunity for both teams to grow our team you know and you, you start over every year and so this is an opportunity for a great finish, but also create momentum and value and uh, experience going into the, to the next the next season. Coaches, um, Marlon Hill with the Orange Bowl Committee had a chance to do some advanced visits with your teams today. Um, but the question that I wanted to ask personally. What did both of you learn from your losses this year going into this game? Well, I mean, I think, you know, you get 12 days, you know, and then you count them all up at the end of the year and, and uh, you want to win them all. You know, we go into this thing every year, you know, every game is the biggest game of the year and you, you, you try to instill that in your kids. I think that's what it takes to be consistent as a program, you know, and you, when you win, you got to be able to move on. And when you have a very disappointing loss, you got to be able to move on. You know, I think it's both very important. And being able to manage success, being able to manage failure is a part of having a consistent program. We've only had one undefeated team since I've been at Clemson. So, you know, it's hard uh, to win. It's really, really hard. What, was there two now out of 131 teams that are undefeated? It's really, really hard to do. Um, the ball can bounce funny ways sometimes. But I think there's opportunity in every game, whether you win or lose, to teach, to develop, uh, to grow your, your, you know, the culture of your program and so forth. So you're always teaching uh, in our world and it's always an opportunity. But, you know, and then ultimately it comes down to 
the the basics, right? I mean, when most of the time when you lose, you watch the tape and you go, man, you know, we we had had you know a bunch of turnovers. Uh, we had a couple of dumb special teams plays. We had some missed assignments. Man, we had some dumb penalties. And so you you take ownership of those things as coaches and players on what you can do better, and you move forward. And even when you win, you same thing. You come in and you go, man, we're lucky because uh, we had some mistakes here. So you just you just keep doing what you always do. You, you apply the lessons and you move forward. Uh, and again, you at the, you know you get a schedule at the beginning of the year. You got twelve days. They give that to you. You go here. You play here. You play at this time. But this is a game that's earned based on what you did on the field. And you know, there's not many teams that get the opportunity to go play in the Orange Bowl and have this experience. So, man, this is a great uh, reward for both of these programs for having incredible seasons. And, yes, we both wish we were undefeated. Um, but, you know, it was a great year. And, you know, you want to finish with one more win. And that's the focus for both teams. And, you know, that's it. Yeah, I would just, uh, you know, a couple of great lessons from, from the just the season in general for, for our roster, our program, is that if you have a, a group of guys that are committed and connected and don't care who gets the credit and uh, work as hard as they possibly can in a really positive way, they compete every day on and off the field, uh, you set the barrier of what you can and can't accomplish. And I think that's really powerful in sport, but I think it's even more powerful as you get into the, to the real world. Uh, the second lesson uh, for, for us that I think we've learned inside of our program uh, and will carry forward is as a competitor, you're only as good as your next performance. Uh, everyone around you, um, the media, but your family, your friends, they're going to pay attention to what happened the previous yeah. Saturday. And, and uh, uh, as a competitor, you got to reset, refocus and, and um, be ready to go compete everybody's going to want to win and play well when they get to kickoff. Uh, you got to do the things that it takes during the course of the week and be able to reset really quickly. Quick follow-up for you, Coach. Um, you lost one of your, in my opinion, a Heisman finalist. How mine, the my, mine too. How has the team adjusted to that loss? Yeah, uh, I think Hendon's ability, you know, you look at Hendon's career and uh, the ups and downs that he went through. It's a great lesson for everybody in sport and in life the ability to handle that and to come out on the other side. And he's so confident and comfortable in who he is. Um, you know, that's why his college football journey took the path that it did and ultimately became one of the best players in college football and helped change a, a program. Um, because of those things, <clears throat> after the setback of being injured, which is devastating, all the work that you put into it, um, the things that we had an opportunity to accomplish as, as a football team, um, it, it's it's devastating. And, um, you know, um, that next day was really hard for him. It, you know, a lot of tears. Um, I know you ask the question why when you're in that situation, uh, but because of his faith, is able to come out on the other side of it. And he's out on the practice field with us that week. Uh, you could still feel his energy. Just because he wasn't playing didn't mean he wasn't still the same leader inside of our program. Uh, he's got an unbelievable future ahead of him. This is a, a small bump in, in his journey. Uh, I know he's going to be tremendously successful as he gets to the next chapter in, in the NFL. And, um, you know, he's got to go through a rehab process, but he's going to handle it the right way. And I know that because of, you know, what he's done his entire life and, and uh, his impact has been felt inside of our program while he was healthy, while he's been injured and uh, he'll be a part of our program forever. We'll take one more question. If there is one more question. There is not. So that will conclude our press conference today. Thank you, Coach Heupel and Coach Sweeney. We look forward to a great game on December the 30th. Thank you again to the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel Hollywood. We want to remind you that the Capital One Orange Bowl kickoff party hosted at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel Hollywood will take place this evening right here at 7 p.m. And you are all welcome to join us. So enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, please drive to arrive home safely. Good evening.